once again, welcome to Bush Stadium. We are home of the 11-time world champion St. Louis Cardinals. Those 11 world championships leads the National League. We're at Bush Stadium today, right by the Stan Musial statue. We're here today to go on a tour at Bush Stadium. We've never done that before. I'm excited. It starts at 11 o'clock, and we're supposed to meet at gate three by the Stan Musial statue. Today the tours are 9.30, 11, 12.30, and 2. And they say to allow about an hour for the tour, and we also get to go through the Hall of Fame. Do you think you should be a Cardinal fan in order to go through this tour? You might enjoy it a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Cubs fans probably don't want to see this. Well, we grew up going to the old Bush Stadium. Yeah. So it'd be kind of cool to see the inside workings of what the new Bush Stadium's like. Maybe we get to run the bases. Run the bases. I hope I so. <laughs> I don't really run, so. <laughs> Walk, trot the bases yeah. or something. It's going to be interesting and fun. There goes the old rally squirrel. <laughs> so on behalf of the St. Louis Cardinals, my name is Ann. I'm going to be your tour guide today. I am a lifelong St. Louisan. I have loved these Cardinals since 1967 when I was 10 years old. You're going to hear more about that as we make our stops along the way. We're going to walk out and we're going to take a look at this beautiful facility and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the Three Bush Stadiums. All right, follow me. First photo op. <laughs> Everybody step in so you can hear me. I don't want to scream at you. It's stuff. beautiful. So once again, welcome to Bush Stadium. We are home of the 11-time world champion St. Louis Cardinals. Those 11 world championships leads the National League. We're very proud of that. This summer, we are celebrating 125 years of St. Louis Cardinal baseball here in St. Louis. So we had a Bush Stadium one, two, and three. Let's start with this beautiful facility. This is Bush Stadium number three. It opened in 2006. And in 2006, a wonderful thing happened. We won a world championship. We're very proud of that. It's also historic. The last time a team won a world championship the first year in their new ballpark was 1923. And we were lucky enough to win again here in 2011. So we have won two of our 11 world championships here in this ballpark. We call this a retro style stadium. It's a state-of-the-art facility, but we want it to look kind of old school. We use red brick because there's a lot of beautiful old red red brick architecture in St. Louis and we also have the, the uh, black iron arches around the top. That is a reference to the Eads Bridge which runs across the Mississippi River just north of our Gateway Arch. We're going to stop here and talk about the greatest player in the history of the Cardinal franchise and that is Stan the Man Museum. He retired in 1963 went into the Hall of Fame as soon as he was eligible in 1969. This statue originally stood across the street outside of Bush 2. The statue went up in 1968. Of course, when we opened here in 2006, we moved the statue across the street with us. When he retired in 1963, he had a total of 3,000. 630 hits, second only to Ty Cobb when he retired. The remarkable thing about those 3,630 hits is exactly one half, 1,815, he hit on the road, and the other half, 1,815, he hit here in Sportsman's Park. Wow. So if you look down on Stan Museum Plaza, you see those red bricks that people paid to engrave their family's names on. There are 3,630 bricks out there, one for each of his hits. And if you look really close in the in the concrete edge of it, there's a line down the center and one side says home and one side says away. Never refused an autograph. They say his autographs aren't worth anything because everybody in St. Louis has them. <laughs> this is the Look. Champions Club. This is an example of what we call one of our all-inclusive 
What I mean by all-inclusive is you get a most excellent reserved seat on the other side of the glass wall. So here's the deal. Two hours before game time, you can come. You can start eating all you want from a very lovely upscale buffet. You can start drinking all that you choose. There are three full-service bars in here. So all you can eat, all you can drink, and an excellent reserved seat. Our average cost is about $100. I can tell you that this season the lowest the ticket has been in here was $89. As we said, the average price is about $125. Our home opener this year, if you've never been here, it's like a national holiday. And this year it was a Sunday night ESPN game and we hosted the World Champion Chicago Cubs, our arch rivals. So tickets were hard to come by. The last time I saw a ticket for sale in here before it sold out, they were $480. Wow. The stars of the show in here are our trophy cases with our World Championship trophies. So we are going to walk down and look at these trophies, but if you don't look at another trophy, you look at the very last one down there because it's the very first trophy that ever was presented in the history of Major League Baseball, so it's a big deal. It's the very first trophy. World Championship trophy, and the Cardinals won it. It's the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Poster size reproduction of our actual scorecards, our souvenir programs from our 11 World Series that we were in. I want to talk briefly about this one. This was when we faced the Yankees. They had a heck of a lineup that year. They were called Murderers Row. We were the underdogs. We were not supposed to win this. So. How terrific that that was our first championship win against the mighty Yankees as an underdog team. And then we end with the two that we won here, 06 and 11. We consider game six of this series the greatest uh, World Series game, of course, certainly in the history of St. Louis. Our hero that night was a man by the name of David Freese. You should do a YouTube video of that hit he got there. It still gives me goosebumps. That was a wonderful <laughs> night in St. Louis. Going in the owner's suite. This is the Bill DeWitt family's private suite, all right? So, let's see what this is. Let's see. Let's see the it's always cool in the owner's suite. <laughs> we'll take advantage of that, too. What do you say? So, welcome. We call this the Redbird Roost. Our current owners are the Bill DeWitt family. Mr. DeWitt is 75 years old. He, his family has been in baseball for a really long time. His dad was in the front office for both the Browns and the St. Louis Cardinals back in the day. And Mr. DeWitt, who I said is 75, when he was eight years old, he was a bad boy for the St. Louis Browns. So he went from bad boy to team owner here in St. Louis. Long history. The, 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 we call everyone's attention to these two fabulous photos. These are our world champions in the locker room right after they won it all in 06 and 11. Of course, our team leader in the face of the franchise is Yadier Molina. He's in the center holding the commissioner trophy in both of those pictures. Mm -hmm. And Bill DeWitt used those as Christmas cards in 06 and 11. So look out at that Budweiser Jumbotron. And do you see the red brick wall with the red numbers running across it? Those are retired numbers. Number one, Ozzie Smith. We consider him the greatest defensive shortstop who ever played. He had 13 consecutive gold gloves. And that's number six for Stan the Man Musial. Number 45 is my favorite number on the wall. He was a pitcher. He pitched in what we called the year of the pitcher and he changed baseball forever. Because of him, they lowered the pitching mound five inches. What was his name? Bob Gibson. Bob Gibson. That man could flat out pitch. His burn run average in 1968 was 1.12. This is the largest club in Major League Baseball, and that means enclosed area, enclosed air conditioned area. If you have a ticket to the Redbird Club, you have a reserve seat right on the other side of the glass wall. This accommodates 3,000 ticketed guests. It runs all the way from third base, like a horseshoe around the first base. They're really nice seats. 80% of them are season ticket holders. And that tells you we're frugal here in Missouri. They're affordable. 
the reason they're affordable is it's not all inclusive. You gotta pay for your food and drink here. Also, I'll just tell you really the wallpaper. I told you Bill DeWitt Jr. that 75 was a bad boy back in the day. These are actual baseball ball cards from his family's private collection. These cards it actually exist. They um, scanned them into a computer and they digitized them and they made it into this spectacular wallpaper. Welcome to the KMOX Home Radio Broadcast. Because I was a child of the 60s, there was not cable TV. Fox Sports Midwest is the booth right next door to us. We didn't have cable. Cardinals games through the week weren't really broadcast, possibly on the weekends. So the way I followed my Cardinals in 1967 was I listened to KMOX radio on a transistor radio, 1120 on the dial. And I'm not the only one that did it. You're going to see the word Cardinal Nation. That's a testament to this radio station. They, this is a really strong signal and can be heard even today in over 40 states in the United States. This is Jack Buck. You young whippersnappers don't know Jack, but ever back in the 60s was not the lead broadcaster. He was the sidekick. The lead broadcaster was a man by the name of Harry Carey. Great picture of Harry. It's the black and white picture in the corner. That's Harry Carey and Stan Musial at Old Sportsman's Park. The two broadcasters that we have today Mike Shannon and John Rooney. They sit down here in the front row. Mr. Shannon is, I think, 75 years old now, and he must have some aches and pains because if you look over, you're gonna see that big red exercise ball. How cool to think Mike Shannon's calling the play-by-play -play and he's sitting on that ball. And I don't see. <laughs> really cool look from the Camo X broadcast booth. So in 53, when Mr. Bush bought the Cardinals, it was a match made in heaven. He didn't know baseball, but he knew beer. He really wanted to own Sportsman's Park. He thought of it as a 30,000-seat tavern with hot, thirsty <laughs> fans that needed something to drink. And he was going to serve them his king of beer. <laughs> Welcome to the Cardinals Club, the most exclusive, expensive ticket in the house. If you get a ticket to the Cardinals Club, you get free parking across the street. You get to come in. This is the full service dining room where you can eat two hours before game time. Then you can go out to your green seats. We St. Louis and talk about the green seats. They're upholstered green seats behind home plate. During the game in a green seat, a waiter or waitress will come every inning and take your order for whatever you want to eat or drink during the game. And this is the only area that's open almost an hour after the game. So you can sit here and have one final drink and wait for the tray to it's like it's on a cruise ship. There's the green seats. Here's the view from behind home plate. Incredible. There's the Cardinals dugout. There's the phones to the bullpen. Say on behalf of the St. Louis Cardinals, thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure and an honor to give tours. You've been a great group. I heard to hope you learned a little bit about us. Thanks for visiting us and come back and see us again, okay? What time is it, Donna? 12.15. So our tour was about an hour and 15 minutes. That was really worth the money, I thought. Oh my gosh, yeah. And mine was only $18. How much was yours if you're 62 or older? 16. 16. So $2 off. And kids are cheaper. Not sure what it is, but... So that was great. Now we're going to go to the Hall of Fame Museum, which is included with our ticket. And it's right across the street.